So, I hope you're sitting comfortably for this video because um, what I'm gonna do here is, is literally draw back the curtains on the scam that is council tax. And yeah, it is absolutely a provable scam. And when you finish watching this video, guys, you're gonna know this truth and you will know the sheer criminality of what they are doing. Now, if you're like me, at first you're gonna be angry, right? Then as you digest this information, you may, you may well even kind of think it can't be true, right? There's skepticism there. But then you're gonna finally accept that we live in this matrix of control and corruption, and this is what they are doing. And then you might wanna do something about it like I did. And that, my friends, is the entire purpose of this video. I wanna actually show you why it's a scam first of all and then with knowing that information i want to explain how we can use their system the legal system against them and ensure that we win Before I get into any of that stuff, I want to be clear on something. I do not blame any council employee. In fact, in my experience, most of them are actually really nice, although they are pretty much clueless to the offence that they're committing. Um, and do you know what, guys? That isn't actually an excuse for me, especially these days, because most councils now have had to deal with a lot of different people trying not to pay their council tax as they start to learn this truth. And a lot of them are trying the common law stuff. I actually did a little bit of that and a lot of them get royally shafted. But my point is this, if you're in the council, how can you not be questioning what's going on? Why are these people doing this, right? And it, for me, it just seems that they don't question that and they just carry on destroying lies. You know, and, and today when it's getting harder and harder for most people to do this, this is what kind of really rubs my skin. It's all by design. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, these employees made the choice to continue doing what they do. And for me, that just means that they deserve what's coming and they need to be held to account in a court of law. And that's exactly what I want to be doing. So this is why council tax is so easy to deal with, because they are actually that clueless um, and they don't really understand how the legal system works. And so like a lot of people stuck in this matrix, they tend to only repeat and do the same things that have been repeated and done to them previously. And so this kind of cycle continues for humanity at large, right? We only got to look at what's going on out there. So what I'm going to share here, guys, has got nothing to do with all that common law, freedom of, on the land stuff. This really has no place in the legal system and this is why people get burnt. It's absolutely pointless trying to win that way because it just can't be heard in a court of law. It's their system. It's like putting diesel into a petrol car. It just, it just doesn't work, right? So you can learn that the hard way or you can follow what I'm gonna share here and actually get a win using their legislation and the literal truth against them. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so first I want to quickly talk about legislation and how the lower courts in our system work from a civil and criminal level. Um, and I know you might know this already, guys, but legislation is not law, okay? Parliament passed legislation, acts and statutes. They don't pass any laws. And this is because we live in a legal system of commerce, which in simple terms is contract law, right? So contract law is very well established now. And for any contract to be legally valid and enforceable, it has to essentially tick four boxes. And if it misses any of them, it's not legally valid. So these are full disclosure, which basically means every party is fully aware of what each party is actually committing to and why. OK, and anything less than that, guys, is an absolute fraud. The contract was not agreed or the contract was agreed under false pretenses. Number two is equal consideration. Now this is where, you know, the consideration of an item of equal value has to take place. It might be cash or it might be a thing, but it's gotta be equal value. The bottom line here is both parties consider the exchange of equal as equal value. Number three is lawful terms and conditions. No shenanigans basically in the proposed agreement, simple. Number four is mutual consent. And this is the biggest one. In having full disclosure, equal consideration and lawful terms and conditions, both parties for that contract consent to the terms of the contract. That's a legally binding contract and it's really simple, right? So that being a well-established law, contract law, let me ask a quick question before we go on because I'm hoping now just from that alone, the penny's gonna to start to drop. Did your council do any of the above? Was there any equal consideration? Was there full disclosure? 
Did you even sign a contract, right? Now, I know you didn't because none of us do, right? But that's the point I wanted to put on here. And that's because legislation, although given the force of law by the consent of the governed, which is us, always works on the basis of assumed consent. We're not signing anything. Did we consent is the question. I'm gonna make a quick side note here. If you really do want to dig into this stuff, right, at a deep level, it's a far, far bigger rabbit hole than I'm sharing on this video. There's a link in the description to another video called The Straw Man. Watch it, guys, okay? It's all true, and therein lies your freedom. Right, let's get back to the council tax stuff. Now, we know the four boxes that we now need to tick for a contract to be legally valid. Let's get into the courts and understand basically how it all works. Because the truth here is, right, the council doesn't use the legal system. They pretend they do, but they really use fear and intimidation to get you guys to pay, not the courts. And therein lies the scam and the sheer illegality of what these people are doing. So let's talk about the courts, okay? Now, I know this is boring, right? But if you really want to know and be free and awake to the sheer corruption that's going on here, guys, it's really important to understand this stuff because it gives you that foundational layer of knowledge you're going to need to deal with it. And also to expose the scam because it's impossible to ignore once you know. So let's get into it. So matters concerning debt are generally the civil um, and not criminal. Criminals handled in a different court, civil in the county court. This is where CTJs and bankruptcies, as an example, are dealt with. Now, a little side note, a good friend of mine, his mother, who was a retired NHS nurse, was bankrupted and had her house repossessed over an alleged 3K-ish debt, council tax debt. She was going through mental illness at the time, had no idea what was really going on, okay? And my friend was only aware when they were in the process of repossessing her home. If not for him, to be frank, his mum would literally have been put on the streets. This is what they do. It's evil and it's disgusting and this is why I've got no sympathy for them. Fortunately, my friend knows the truth and um, he's dealing with the matter, right? And this is kind of how we've got to know what we know through going through this. He's got them banged to rights and he's gonna go all the way and he will absolutely win. These are just liars and crooks, lazy, incompetent people in general, especially in his matter, okay? I'm not saying everybody, but in his matter. And it happens way more than you would think, okay? And this is why we've got to stop paying this damn tax because we do not have to. And that's what I want to share in all of this video, okay? They don't even follow their own council tax rules, which are in this book. That's how bad they are, okay? Now, offences of a criminal nature are dealt with in the magistrate's courts. So we've got a civil jurisdiction and we've got a criminal jurisdiction. They're two very different. Council tax, therefore, you would think would be dealt with in the civil courts being debt. No. And it, <laughs> this is really just the beginning of the scam, but I'm going to come back to that in just a little bit because it goes a little bit deeper. First, I actually want to explain the rules of the court system because if I'm a judge and I'm sitting in the county court, I need some sort of rules to govern how the court operates and how I operate, right? And, and my actions as a judge. So to really effectively make a ruling based on the law or legislation to be more accurate, we have to have the rules. We also need rules for the claimants, okay? And the defendants in that, that situation. So put simply, these are called civil procedure rules. Basically everything in those green books just over there, over my shoulder, they're the civil procedure rules. Lower court criminal matters follow the criminal procedure rules. So we have, in simple terms, civil matters, civil procedure rules. Criminal matters, criminal procedure rules. Pretty simple stuff, right? So, logically thinking, if any council tax matter were it to reach the court, it would be heard in the county court using the civil procedure rules because this is merely an alleged debt, right? I think you already know the answer to that one. No, it doesn't happen that way at all. This is where the scam starts, so let's dig in. Okay, so look, I'm gonna go and explain what it is they do, okay? I'm gonna break this all down with proof points that you can also use to confirm yourself. But first of all though, council tax matters are heard in a criminal court, the magistrate's court, not the civil court. Why is that? It's really simple because they basically just hire the courtroom. None of this stuff's legal, right? They hire the courtroom specifically to process council tax matters. 
okay? I'm gonna say that again to this thing thing. They hire the courtroom for the day for only council tax matters. It's just a hired venue pretending to be a court of law. That in itself should be mind blowing, but it gets worse. In addition to this, all council tax matters are bulk processed. And what all of that basically means is they're not following any of those procedural rules that I've talked about. It's not even a real court on that particular day. If you actually go to the summons hearing, guys, and you ask the magistrates if they're under their oaths, okay, you're going to get silence, maybe even a little bit of bluster. But if you keep pushing them on that, they will simply leave the room. They are not there under their oaths on that day. They are private contractors. And if they admitted they were under their oaths, they would be in a world of trouble. They're committing criminal offences. Now, to press this point home, if you or anyone else were to bring a claim, we have to follow those procedure rules, right? We have to use the correct legal forms for the application for the claim. Even if we are def um, defending a claim, the same applies. There would also be a case file. If we're the claimant, the defendant is entitled access to the case file to see what it is that's going on so we can defend the claim. The rules are there for a reason, but none of this stuff applies to council tax, none of it. And folks, that is how we can actually catch them out and ultimately stop paying and really have all of your repayments funded too. So with that, let's go into this deeper. Now, what gives the council the power to go and bankrupt the unaware and even repossess their homes? It's the so-called liability order that we get. Now, what I want to do is go over the process the council will follow that ends with us getting this liability order, okay? But I also want to point out all of the all of the shenanigans, for want of a better word, that they get up to whilst doing it and how you can actually expose all of this. So to get that liability order, you're going to have to first stop paying, right? Now, when you stop paying, um, your council tax, you will first get some reminders. These come every other week. Eventually, you're going to receive a court summons. This is an official looking piece of paper that for the unaware is a pretty scary and intimidating thing because who on earth wants to go to court, right, for fun, especially when it's a magistrate's court, right? What happens at this point is most will just pay under the threat of a court hearing, a magistrate's court hearing. For those that don't, they're going to get this fake liability order, which is issued at a fake summons hearing, okay, in a fake court, hide for the day, that should be a civil matter, right? And that fake liability order is used to get that alleged debt paid using debt collection agents to intimidate with their various bully boy tactics. But before, before we get into the fake liability order, though, I want to take a closer look at the summons, because if the liability order is fake, what about the summons? Summons now, guys. So in any normal situation, when a summons is issued, there should be a legal process, as I've been saying, that's basically followed all those procedural rules there, right? A complaint should be raised and filed with the clerk of the Justice of the Peace who sits in the magistrate's court. And that complaint has to adhere to some rules, namely Section 51 of the Magistrate's Court Act 1980. Now, doing this properly would also create a case file of which the court would also have a record. And following the Magistrates' Court Act, there should also be a case progression officer appointed to manage said case. Now, this bit is important because it's how we start backing the council into a corner so as to catch them out. You see, if this was done as it should be done, there would be a record of the summons in the court record, as well as a record of the complaint and details of who the case progression officer is and a case file. But the truth is, truth is none of this stuff exists. And this is where our secret weapon comes in, the data subject access request. Now the Data Protection Act 2018 is so, so powerful. We own our data and information guys and using this act is how we catch them out in their lies. When a DSAR is filed with the court, they are legally obliged to respond to that DSA. And when you ask the right questions in the right way, the court will confirm they don't hold any data or information on you at all. Well, how can that be? Where's the record of the original complaint held? Where's the case file? Where's the case progression officer? Who is he or her? You know, where's the summons? 
Here's a DSAR that I actually filed with court and here's their reply confirming they don't hold any data and information on me. So here's a response to a data subjects access request. Um, this is one I'm actually working on um, with somebody else. Um, one of the things I do, by the way, guys, is if you want to do this, I'm happy to work with you. Um, so you don't need to make the mistakes that I made. We can just literally go through exactly what we've got to go through and um, keep these people to account. But anyway, this is a response from the MOJ. And you can say re um, response to the uh, the data subjects access request. Um, quite a recent one, but the bottom line is that this is all about do they hold the data and information? Where's the court case management file? Where's all of our data? Now, there's a number of other parts to a DSAR um, that we would do, but here's the main one here. Look, so please provide data information contained within the court case management file. And here they are just confirming, um, conducted a search of your personal data. I can confirm that the uh, magistrate's court concerned does not hold any personal data within the scope of your request. That is because they do not hold a case management file for the court proceedings involving you. So there you have the so-called court that the council issued a summons for, for a hearing specifically for data, for um, council tax, sorry, confirming they hold no data and information. So none of this, that just absolutely categorically proves what I've been saying so far. None of this follows any procedural rule. It's, it's an entire scam by the, the, the courtroom for the, for the day, right? So there's your proof and it gets worse. So let's carry on with this. So if they hold no data on me or you, which will be exactly the same case if you do this stuff, right? The question now is, well, who issued the summons if not the court? Isn't the court meant to do that? You guessed it. It's the council that issued the summons. And that, my friends, is an offence, which I'm going to cover a little bit later on. And what's crazy is they may even admit to this. The court will definitely confirm it, but the council may admit to it. This is how ignorant they really are of what's going on. In my case, I did have them admit to it. Um, and also they confirmed to me that the court gave them authorization to issue or print that summons. So in my case, to prove that that wasn't true, and keep in mind this, guys, whomever makes the claim has the burden of proof. I submitted a freedom of information request uh, to the council and I asked for confirmation of the legislation or the court rules that supported their claim. You can guess <laughs> there aren't any, right? I also sent uh, an FOI request to the MOJ to confirm the same thing. And you can see how easy it is to catch them in these lies, right? They are making a claim that you owe them a debt. Well, prove it then. So all of this stuff that we are doing becomes evidence for later on. This is why I'm sharing all of this. Okay, let's check out my own, one of my own summonses. I'm going to show you a summons and I'm going to walk you through why this thing is just illegal. It's just a piece of paper with a bunch of stuff written on it. It's got no um, weight, no force in law if you know what's going on. All right, let's go through that. Okay, guys, so this is, you're looking at a uh, alleged summons from the council tax issued, um, apparently issued by the court, but we know because I've shown you the DSAR, it isn't issued by the court, it's, it's all done by the council. It's nothing to do with the court at all. But let's just talk this through some basics as to why this is not a legitimate summons. First of all, everything from the court is done on correct form. And that correct form is something you can go onto the gov.uk and you can, you, these forms are all there for download. Like you cannot process anything in the legal system without it being on proper court form. Now, first of all, before we really dig into this, that's just a piece of paper with some writing on it, <laughs> right? First of all, um, the only way we know that this is anything to do with the summons is it's just got summons written on it as a title, right? Another thing would be, you're never going to get barcodes on any court documentation that's really just so the council can track for their own records because they're bulk processing right any court documentation has got to have some sort of official seal because otherwise anybody could be running around with bits of paper saying i've got a warrant i've got this i've got that right and and that's another story because that does actually happen but the bottom line is that there is no there's no court seal here there's nothing going on at all there's no indication that this has actually come from any court at all right so there's the first thing to look out for now, another obvious one is this, you know, apparently um, a complaint has been made, the understined clerk to the Justice of the Peace. Now, this individual is a public servant, okay? We should know who they are. 
well, where are they on here? They should have signed it. They haven't signed anything. And the reason they haven't signed it is because this is a sham. It's a scam summons. They would never put their name to something like that because they'd end up in jail. Right? That is why there is no name. So that in itself means that this is not legitimate. Right? If this got into the High Court, which you can do, and I'm actually doing one right now where I'm going to go all the way. Um, this isn't... This is bad guys this is this is a this is an offense they're impersonating the court and i'm going to show you some legislation that supports what i'm saying okay so this is absolutely just a piece of paper with a bit of writing on it okay and one other thing i'll show you i haven't covered this in the call in the video sorry but if you get that council tax handbook this 30 pound and it says it in the handbook their own rules it only cost them 50p to produce 50 pence and they're charging you 30 they're just scam artists. That is all they are. All right. So there's a typical summons. It's completely fake. I've already showed you previous to this that the, the courts literally don't hold any information on any of this stuff at all. So if the courts hold nothing and this is meant to be heard in a court of law, well, who then is doing all of this stuff? And we already know the answer to that. So with that said, let's move on. OK, so let's quickly summarize stuff here, guys. There's been a lot to go through. So we have a fake summons that obviously is in a summons that is being used by the council to confirm that there is a fake hearing that is being held in a fake court, essentially, because it's hired for the day for the purpose of council tax, whereby a fake liability order is going to be issued if you don't make payment. It's all a lie. And in doing all of this, OK, the individuals, the employees are committing a number of, of offences. So let's take a look at the relevant legislation. This is going to blow your mind. OK, guys, so we're going to take a quick look here at all of the relevant legislation as pertains to us basically holding these individuals to account in the council. Now, you're going to deal with a number of different individuals. So um, you kind of want to make this a bit personal. Don't don't deal with the organisation that is the council. Deal with the individuals that are actually doing this stuff, OK, because this is where we can really hold them to account. So you can see here on, on government websites, this is all relevant legislation and you're going to see very quickly um, how uh, or what it is they're doing, OK, that is, is wrong and, and it's actually an offence. So Local Government Act 1918, uh, sorry, 88. This is one they use themselves, by the way. Now, I want to show you the relevant sections. I'm not going to read everything here. I just want to get to the point for you so you can see. Section 78.2. Provided that the transfer of powers and duties enacted by this act shall not authorise any county council or any committee or any member thereof to exercise any of the powers of a court of record to administer an oath, to exercise any jurisdiction under the Summary Ju Jurisdiction Acts and perform any judicial business. Okay, now, summary, right? What, have we already, what do we already know? They're hiring a courtroom for a day that isn't a courtroom. They're not following any procedural rules. They do not issue the summons. They do it all, sorry, the court does not issue the summons. They do all of this stuff themselves. I've showed you the summons. It's not a real summons. What are they doing here? Shall not authorize any county council to exercise any of the powers of a court of record. Is that what they are doing? I think they are, right? It's pretty clear that's what they're doing. And you can catch them in all of this, right? So that's the first piece of legislation that's very relevant. Let's go to the next one. Administration of Justice Act 1970, part five. <clears throat> Excuse me. A person, okay, now, there's, I wanna do a video on legalese because we've all been, we all think that the word person is part of the English language. It is not. There's another language that's been interwoven with the English language called legalese. This is part of the the illusion that they cast in the Matrix. Okay, so the person is the individual. Go watch that straw man video if you haven't. You'll understand this a bit more. But this is why we want to be dealing with the individuals in the council, not the actual organisation itself, because they are committing these offences. So let's just go through this. A person commits an offence if with the object of coercing another person to pay money claimed from the other as a debt due. What's happening here, guys? What's happening? We already know they're not following any of the, 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 the procedural rules. They're issuing this summons. They're issuing a liability order. It's all being done by the council. Is the individual that's telling you that you owe this alleged debt committing an offence? Okay, I don't have 
Um, I have not been in a court where that's been answered by a judge, but I intend to make that happen. Okay, you don't need to go that far to deal with the council tax, but I wanted to show you how bad this is. A person commits an offence if harasses the other with demands for payment. Is that not happening here? In respect of their frequency or the manner or 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 the manner or occasion of making any such demand of any threat or public publicity by which any demand is accomplished. Like, it's all there, guys. Okay, so that's two acts right now. Let's get to the next one. You can get them perjury as well. It's so cool. These people are so ignorant a lot of the time. They have no comprehension of the law or what it is they're actually doing. I'd actually love to get this in front of somebody that works in the council and just get their real point of view. Um, because this is what they're doing. If any person knowingly or willfully makes otherwise than an oath a statement false in a material particular... Um, and the statement is made in a statutory declaration. So data subject access requests, guys. Okay, and I'm going to come into that because you've got to understand what this is. This all interconnects to one or the other, right? We get this into a court of law. They have, I don't really have anywhere to go with it, right? Next one, Fraud Act. Yes, the Fraud Act. Section 3 of the Fraud Act. A person is in breach of this section if he dishonestly fails to disclose to another person information which is under a legal duty to disclose and intends by failing to disclose the information to make a gain for himself or another to cause loss. Now, simple terms, when I finish this video, I'm going to finish it with the nail in the coffin, which is they have the evidence, our obligation to pay. And they can't because there is no contract, there is no obligation. Okay, which means fraud. Now, accusing somebody of fraud is a very, very serious offence. Okay, so I'm not saying that we're going to do that here. I'm just pointing out some legislation as pertains to this particular matter. Okay, there's actually one other section of the Fraud Act. I'm going to just get you to that as well. Seven, making or supplying articles for use in frauds. A person is guilty of offence if he makes, adapts, supplies, or offers to supply any article, knowing that it's designed or adapted for use in the course or in connection with fraud. Now, again, summons, liability order, they're just pieces of paper. They are not court-issued pieces of paper. Well, as much as the court-issued pieces of paper is on proper legal form is my point, okay? I'm hoping you're getting a sort of penny drop moment here. This whole thing is a scam. <laughs> mind-blowing isn't it and we haven't even gotten to the liability order yet guys now all of this is made possible by our weapon of choice in all alleged debt matters it's the data protection act 2018 so i want to take a quick look at the data protection act the weapon we have is the data protection act using these dsars data subject access requests that we can send now i want to show you another thing because they're committing all these different offenses but even forget all of those and let's just look at the data protection act because even in this it is an offense for a person listed in subsection four okay to alter deface block erase or destroy or conceal information with the intention of preventing disclosure this is this gets them because they can't hide it. They they have to comply with the DSAR. So they generally will just come back with a bunch of rubbish that means nothing because they can't conceal the information. Or they just have to admit we don't have the information, much like the one with the MOJ in the DSAR there. Now obviously the MOJ is not going to uh, lie, right? Well, that's another thing, but the MOJ is not going to lie. That's why they just come back and say, we don't have that data information. The council will try a lot of smoke and mirrors instead. They won't outright come there. Unless you've got your very particular with the way you phrase the questions, which leaves them literally no wiggle room. But the point is, it's an offence to hide our data and information. So if they have the original liability order, if they have the original summons, they have to share that with us, but they don't. OK, so I've just gone through that legislation. They are kind of banged to rights in a number of different ways. But the trick then is how you use it. So all the way through the process of dealing with the council tax, the Data Protection Act is the main weapon that we wield. And we have then kind of throw these other bits of um, legislation, local government acts, administration of justice, perjury, fraud. You can put them in if you want to um, do what they do to us and intimidate them because none of these individuals that are employees in the council 
um, that are used to bullying people like it when it's reversed. Okay, and I'm not saying we're bullying, we're just pointing out matters of fact in law. And I can guarantee you this gets them to think twice about what it is they're doing. Okay, so that's the legislation. Let's move on. Do you see why it's all so powerful? To summarise, there is nothing legal about the issuance of the summons or the actual summons itself. Nothing about this follows any law at all, but it doesn't stop them doing what they do. So to really get the win here and really hold these people to account, we want that liability order because what they do here is even worse. Okay, let's talk about the liability order. Now keep in mind guys, anything legal and lawful ought to follow the procedure rules as I've discussed and also use proper court form, okay? Here's a little fact that you can actually find in the council tax handbook. This is the 13th edition. Um, you can buy this on Amazon and it's basically meant to be the rules that the council follow. My own experience with this is that they definitely don't follow the rules and um, they often don't even know what's in this book. They don't even know what they're doing. Um, and they're, they're used to literally ruining lives with this stuff. You know, my friend's mother, who I, who I said had her home repossessed, well, they followed none of the rules in this book at all. Um, the fact that she was dealing with mental health issues meant that they shouldn't even have issued the summons, let alone repossessed their home, okay? That's why he's gonna win. Anyway, crazy part, their own book, right, confirms the legal form used for the issuance of a council tax liability order was discontinued in 2003. Now I'm gonna quote from the book. It's all in the book, it's crazy. Okay, so you can see here, this is directly from the council tax handbook. This handbook that you can buy on Amazon and it goes through all of the, the rules and procedures that the council should be following um, with regards to council tax, but they don't. But here's the key piece, right? Um, and I won't quote every Form A, which is what it used to be called, originally provided to drop liability orders, was removed from law 1st of October 2003, and no form has been substituted in its place. So that's an absolute irrefutable fact that's even in their own damn handbook, and yet they still do what they're doing. How are these liability orders real, legitimate? They, they literally are not, which is why the court doesn't hold any copy, because they can't. Right, so hopefully guys, you're getting this now. Um, the liability orders are not real. The form does not exist, period. So we have no legal form from which the court can even issue a valid liability order, guys. But given we already know the court doesn't issue the summons, could it be that they don't issue the liability order too? Well, yes, we know the answer, right? So using our secret weapon, the, the DSAR, we can actually confirm the court don't hold it. And so what do we do now? Well, we DSAR the council too, and we ask them for our data and information contained within the original liability order. And what happens here, do you think? Well, <clears throat> if they don't produce it, we win. There's no liability order that the court's already proven it. And if they do produce it, we win. It's a provably fake liability order and the council's gonna be in some pretty big trouble here. And don't forget all the legislation that I've already showed you, right? So to summarize what we've got so far, we have a fake court with a fake court hearing. They've hired it for the day. We have the council literally committing an offense by issuing or printing the summons and the liability order themselves. And the court in question holds none of our data, none of the original documentation on proper court form. No summons, no law liability order exists. So we can prove the council don't have a valid claim and worse, they're even committing offenses here. But there's actually one more point to cover. This is the actual final nail in the coffin, right? The council will happily tell you that they get their power to enforce council tax from the regulations, regulation 34 of the council tax Administration and Enforcement Regulations Act, 1992. Remember what I said earlier though, about legislation, right? It's a contract essentially. And in simple terms, it requires our consent. But also remember too, that whoever makes the claim has the burden of proof. There's a section of that act that they use, section 34.6, that requires the council to satisfy the court of the following two presumptions. Okay, so section 34.6 of the Council Tax um, Regulations 1992, right? Let's look at that specifically. 
Section 6. The court shall make the order if it is satisfied that the sum has become payable by the defendant and has not been paid. Now remember, there's procedural rules that should be followed. That the counsel are meant to like basically follow these rules, present the complaint in the right way and show all of the evidence that proves okay, that we should be paying it. Now what it basically means is that the counsel need to satisfy the court of the following two presumptions. The sum has become payable okay, by the defendant, me, you, whoever, and that any obligation has not been paid. And the key word is obligation. Remember, these are all legislations. These are acts, statutes, legislation. They are contracts that require consent, consent, sorry. Where's the obligation? There is none. So if the council have not evidenced it, how have they followed due process to show that we are obligated to pay the council tax? Just see how this whole thing, it like it falls apart when you just keep picking away at it. It's an absolute sham. So let's move on. So first of all, do we believe the council has even attempted to satisfy the court of anything? Well, we already know the answer to that. No, we've already proven that without these SARS, okay, they have nothing. But the key word here is obligation. Has the council at any time proven that you, me, or anyone else is obliged to pay council tax. No, they haven't. So how can they claim that you're liable then? If any other corporation, okay, and they are a corporation, the council, if any other corporation said that you owed them a debt and they didn't provide any evidence to back up that claim, you'd basically tell them where to go. Why is this any different? This is exactly what the council were doing to everybody. And millions pay it. And millions now can't even afford it but yet they carry on, they've even put it up, right? And in doing so, they're forcing so many people into financial difficulties, people that don't know any better. It, it makes me sick, guys, it makes me sick. But we are not without power. We have the DSAR, and when we know the game, we can use the Data Protection Act and the Freedom of Information Act, and we can literally catch them in their lies. And when they don't comply with that DSAR, which they won't because they can't, we issue a letter before claim and then the claim itself. And folks, it may not even get to the point of claim because the penny may well already drop at this point and you can simply negotiate with them. That's what I did in one of my matters. But if you do file a claim, and by the way, guys, I can help you with all this stuff. So if you want help, please book a call um, and we'll walk through exactly how we're gonna do it. Anyway, if you do file a claim in court, you're gonna win. And if you want to, you can take the matter to the criminal courts. Now, I've not personally done that yet, but if I'm honest with you, I'm I'm going to do that. Um, I really do feel it's time to hold these people to account. You know, as, as the world is going nuts, um, <clears throat> this stuff just has got to stop. You know, I, I, I really can't do it. So anyway, let this stuff percolate. Lose any fear or stress that you might have about this stuff. You are not obliged to pay any tax at all, especially council tax. And if you feel it's time to stop paying and you want my help, and advice doing this. There's a link in the description of this video. You can book a call with me, we'll go over everything that um, pertains to your matter. I'll explain what we're gonna do, what to expect, and if you truly want to do it and set yourself free, we'll go on and do it, okay? That's exactly what we do. It's time to own who we really are in this system. We are all beneficiaries. We have the power. There is no debt, all tax is voluntary. Let's make a stand now. If now, if not now, when are we ever going to do it? Let's reclaim what's ours. Our freedom, guys, be taken from us. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this of interest. Um, I've got another one to come on utilities. Um, that should be out later this week. I'm going to draw back the curtain on everything. Everything that I've done personally, all my experiences, all the three points. The whole system is a scam. And it's time we wake up to it. And not only that, it's time we did something about it. And that's why I'm sharing this information. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Um, if you could please like and subscribe to this channel and please share, share this with other with your friends, your family, whatever. Anybody that's kind of in some financial difficulties, waking up to the reality of the world, please share this because I really want to share this, this, this information. There's lots of people giving information out there, lots of really good people giving information out there. Um, and I'm not saying I'm really good or anything like that, but I just know what I know, I know it works, I know it's true, and I want to share it with you guys.